Since day 4 of Lickstart, I've been running a farming strategy. I like it quite a lot, so I decided to make this video. The strategy is Metamorphosis Beast plus Essence, which is not something new, but something new for me. I didn't want to Lickstart Expedition for the sixth time in a row, so I decided to diverge from my usual path and I got to this point. At first I wanted to make a full guide, explaining everything in details but that's a bit pointless and I will focus on my choices and I will explain them. If I wanted to make a full guide about it, it would have been way too long. There are certain disclaimers about this strategy though. First of all you need big single target damage because you're going to fight big metamorphs, beefy essences and beefy beasts. And sometimes even essence beasts. Second of all you need a lot of search space. The problem here comes with that you have to trade a lot of metamorph organs and a lot of beasts from Mineheart. If you don't have enough stash space then you'll have to refresh your inventory a lot more often which will be very annoying and ineffective. And lastly you need to use discord servers otherwise it will be very painful for you to sell every single yellow beast or not being able to sell red beasts in bulk. So keep that in mind too. And on this note we can go with the strategy itself. So first of all we have Metamorph, this is a core part of the strat. You would like to pick literally everything you see. One debatable point here is unethical experiments because it essentially just gives you 5% chance to drop a Metamorph Scarab and for free points you can do better stuff. Other than this all points are quite good, they are enhancing either the encounters themselves or the Metamorph rewards. Escape experiment spawns another Metamorph on the map, which is randomly rolled in terms of modifiers it has and rewards. Imperfect Anatomy is important here because it compensates fine specimens, and fine specimens is making an encounter a lot slower and a bit more challenging. You would also want to run Gilded Metamorph Scarab. What Gilded Metamorph Scarab does is it gives one more item my sample when you defeat Metamorph Encounter. Make it so we get free itemized samples in total with the Atlas passive tree. And most importantly, it gives a reward for every single Metamorph monster. Making it so it's very easy for us to choose a very good reward. Namely, Catalysts, Scarabs, Fossils, Deep Cards, Currency and whatnot. An important part of this strategy for me is gathering itemized samples or organs as they're called and collecting them in sets and selling them. There's something that's not all people do and I do understand this, it is a lot of clutter, it takes a lot of inventory space, it is slowly selling if you want to sell it and not run it, but for me it is literally getting more currency on top of what I'm already doing and sacrificing a few minutes and one or two stashes is not an issue for me. Although organs require certain manipulations you have to do when encountering Metamorph while and also having different Atlas setup. Another core part of this strat is running essences. Essences are very insane, they are one of the best crafting materials, so everyone wants them. And we pick literally everything on the tree to get more essences on the map, to have very self-explanatory synergy between amplified energies and crystal resonance literally duplicating the essences we get. The only thing we are not doing is we are not going for the Remnant of Corruption essence chance because Remnants of Corruption essentially break our chances to throw our own Remnant of Corruption and possibly upgrading essences on the monster. We also take in Crystal Atlas because more essences is good. We also use a map device for free extra essences for free chaos which is a very good deal. And that's the reason we are not writing this accent that spawns one more essence. And I'm not a fan of remnants of corruption. I prefer to buy them in bulk and then corrupt it myself instead of possibly breaking good essence mobs. There are two use cases for remnant of corruption. First of all, you want to reroll purple essences, scorn, dread, misery, and envy, because they can roll into corrupted essences. And also, I'm using it on three, four, three kings plus at least one screaming, so that we have a lot of deafenings that are still duplicated. At first I didn't have beast in my strategy, this is something that I came up with a bit later. I had highs first, but even with low investment in terms of points on Atlas tree, it was very underwhelming, and beasts were kinda natural fit, especially with some hype for imprint and split beasts by Reddit and their ingenious takes about printing currency. But still, a lot of crotting requires some rare red bees and a lot of yellow bees. We're taking in almost all points here too, except for Animal Companion, because we are going to run Scarab to spawn Einhar, and we're not making Einhar into a damage dealer, we don't need it. We take literally everything, we want to get more bees from the deep, 
more bees from the caverns. And so we are speculating to these two. Great migration is very great. You can get 20 to 30 bees on your map with this, so that's quite insane. An annoying part here is though you have to get beast theory orbs and capture the beast into this. And that's a bit slow and tedious process, but if you're doing it in one go, putting it in your sash, selling it in bulk at once, it's not as bad. Speaking about league mechanic, all I'm doing is I'm picking up good bases. Usually it's something like Picket Bow, Imperial Claw and whatever with high level. And then I'm just throwing them into the Fortune map and throw them into Dump Tap. Sometimes I get something really good and it is very obvious. In this case, I'm just crotting the item on top of the tree and selling it. For example, I had a very good Toxic Rainbow with very good tree and I managed to sell it for 40 divines. The altar choice is up to you. The advantage of Syrian Exarch is that you're getting a lot more smaller currency, you don't have to travel far, and instant monster spawn. It has its downsides though. First of all, you have to sacrifice small pantheon for it, because burning ground from these mobs are just incredibly bad. There is a thing that this small currency is getting devalued over time, so check it out yourself. Now there are certain things I didn't take in my atlas, but I have a suggestion for you if you want to try it out yourself instead of some of the lesser points I have on this tree. First of all, you can try Delirium. You don't have to spec a lot into it. What you want is to get a little bit more chance to spawn it. And then you're just killing mobs, getting to probably 5 rewards, and getting Delirium orbs and whatever general rewards it gives to you, and you're moving on. So that's the main advantage of it, very low investment. It is in return. I hate Ray Filter on my screen. So I really don't want to engage with it. Another thing that you can do is engage yourself with highs. I personally didn't like highs. It felt like even for the low investment it took on the Atlas tree, it was not good enough. And sometimes you get stuff like fully revealed blueprint, but overall it felt like I am not getting enough for investment, even though the investment itself is very low. Another topic that I talk about a little bit at the start that many people find optional but I really would call it mandatory is organs and the advantage of organs is that they sell for quite a lot they sell very slowly but I do feel it's worth it if you have enough stash space and you're fine with waiting till it sells or maybe you would like to run it yourself so this is an example of my stash where I just have a lot of the organs and a lot of them are already organized it is important to keep them in sets because people are not buying standalone organs and this will require certain manipulations on the map which will be shown in the showcase. Another annoyance with organ setup is that they don't drop equally. For example, eyes are very uncommon and brain, lungs, heart are quite common. We are running three boss maps on the Nodella setup and what will happen is that these three unique organs can drop itemized sample and you would like to balance it out in a way that you're getting equal amount of organs throughout many maps. If you have for example two livers and eye, what you want to do is in one metamorph while you put one eye and other rewards that are non-unique and then you'll drop three eyes and then on another one you just can put livers. When you don't have rare itemized samples, so I'm talking about eyes and livers, and you have multiple of them, then you will probably want to stack them. This does not increase the total amount of itemized samples that drop, but what it does, it increases the chance to duplicate rewards, so keep that in mind. This also requires you to run specific maps, because you want to have as many unique bosses as possible. It is important that you balance it out and drop all organ sets, because if you try to vendor it, it will not account for organ donor, which will basically mean that you'll have one less reward in your organs. Now, there are certain options that you can do as an extra investment. I opted out of all of them, but I will let you know about them. So first of all, you can use better scarabs. In this thread, I'm using rusted B-series scarab and sometimes rusted Carter scarab. So if you want, you can go up to polish. The reason I'm not going with Polish Beast Series Scarab is that 1.5c chaos difference at the moment of recording for one extra red beast didn't seem good enough for me. Maybe if the difference is closer, then surely you would want to go for Polish Scarabs instead. And as for Carlos Scarabs, I'm sustaining pretty well even without them, but you can sell extra maps later. The next thing that I'm not using is Beast Duplication Saxon. This is completely up to you. For me, it seemed that the value of it wasn't 
good enough for its cost. It's probably best suited for party playing where you're getting a lot more beasts on average. But you can try it yourself and see if it is actually better. Another option is the Saxon for Remnant of Corruption. The main usage of it is that you're getting one more essence in your map. I'm not doing this this league is because we have it on our map device. And so increasing the total count of essences from 4 to 5 isn't as valuable as increasing it from 2 to 3. And possibly breaking the good essence with inability to use our own remnant of corruption is quite nasty. And also if you decide to run highs then you can get yourself extra smuggler's cash with the sextant. As for the atlas setup, my main priority is to run three boss maps. And the best one out of them is city square. It is a very compact map, you can boss rush it to get better auto rewards, and overall that's just a good map. The question comes though, what is your connected map? And you have a few options here, you can opt for Toxic Sewer, because it's just a very good narrow map, or you can even go for Castle Ruins, also quite a good open map. What I'm doing though is I'm running Vault Pyramid, even though the layout itself is trash, there is a big advantage to it. It is a free boss map, so we're not disrupting our plan getting 6 itemized sample per map, which essentially equals to 1 set per map. Of course if you want to discard itemized sample collecting completely, then you can choose whatever map you want. Since I'm only using one compass, I'm just applying 4 catalyst duplications on my white stones, so then I only have to refresh it every 16 maps. Okay, so now let's go through one map showcase using Gilded Metamorph Frosted Beast series curve. Once again, I don't see additional one beast for polish in good enough. If the price is close, then pick it up. And then Rusted Cardo, that's something that's not necessary, but it's an additional map sustain. And again, if you have too many maps, you just sell them. Now Master Mission and just go with Syrian Exarch. I already chose an essence on the map device and I've applied the Saxon Catalyst. As you see, the map is randomly rolled, I don't look at the mods, but that's more about my build. And now we can go in. So, so my usual strategy is to just boss rush and then fully clear the map. As you can see, quite a lot of quant, but again, it doesn't really matter. And that's the advantage of City Square, the boss layer is just in front of you. Boss rushing allows you to get better altars, which is not our main profit, but it's still something noticeable. And yeah, just go for the altars with general rewards. I'm lagging a bit, but I hope it doesn't disrupt the showcase itself. And yeah, then I just go in circles and clear the objectives I had to. I'm killing the bees. Like if you're very efficient into this, you can try to skip uh, the bad red bees, but that's not really feasible. And then at some point it will say that you clear 10 out of 11 bees and you will look for it and then you'll remember that that's the one you didn't want to clear. So just clear everything and then deal with it later in your menagerie. So yeah, that's like the clearing goes this way. This map we also got a random rogue metamorph. It has random mods, random rewards. And unfortunately this one didn't drop anything. Which is not too uncommon, but sometimes it can give you free itemized samples, a lot of catalysts, a lot of general rewards, but this time he didn't roll good rewards. This is the example of a very good essence. If we get lucky with the corruption, we get double Corrupt Essence and this time we got very lucky. And on top of this we have Shrieking Essences, so they had duplicated. And that's a lot of Essences. And then I just keep going. Another Juicy Essence. Now I can Corrupt it because there are just so many Shriekings and then there is one Screaming. So yeah, there is a chance to upgrade it here, and that's a lot of essences that are very highly upgraded. Unfortunately, it didn't upgrade, so... We, we are dealing with what I have. Still a lot of essences. 
Nice Volig mechanic. I, I'll just charge it. I don't mind going for 100. Because if you build a squish, so you have to engage with the mobs a lot harder, then you'll have issues. Maybe you'll stop it hard or brutal. But for me, going all the way is a fine idea. You have to keep in note that this will actually slow your clear speed a lot because they are very beefy. But this time it wasn't really challenging. And drops geodes. I don't sell geodes, I just store them for myself because eventually I'll need them for crafting. Uh, at least I think so. And yeah, I just keep clearing stuff I see. So that's primarily bees, essences, and uh, monsters with metamorph sample. Again, there is a dread essence, but it didn't corrupt, so I, I'll be with dread again. And once again, just running around. And it's actually very close to the end of the map. So all I got to do is to clear the remaining beasts and summon Maramore file. And here you can see the last beast. So that's the main part of the map done. Now another important part is to clear Metamorph, since Metamorph is one of the main sources of profit. So here you can see we have two unique brains, but also a catalyst there. And we don't have rare organs that are unique, which are either eyes or livers. We'll still want to get at least one unique organ put in so that we get something. So in this case we'll have to put Callus in, we'll have to put unique heart, in, unique heart in, and then whatever else we want is our choice. I am not reading through it in that much detail, I just see good icon, I pick it. And for the next one we'll have to use one unique brain we've got to get another itemized sample. Even though this is the, we got lucky, this is the currency one as a general unique reward, I'm not looking into it too much. It's important that it's as high rarity as possible and it's a good reward. Now with this setup we have 51% chance to duplicate rewards. And even though we don't have any good eyes, we just put whatever we want in this case. This and then we are fighting it. Quite easy encounter and three unique hearts, a lot of catalysts, some essences. Now for next one, nothing really important, just to get another itemized sample. This one has light region, so this will take a little bit longer, but not enough. And here you can see I got six itemized samples, which is Equal to one set, but obviously you'll have to run a bit more in order to balance it out. And that's basically the gist of the map. So this might be the most interesting part, the profit breakdown. And rather than talking about pure divines per hour, I will talk about what is our main profit source. And then I will talk about some moments that can allow you to get even more from it. There is no point in talking about pure divine per hour breakdown because you know, everything is changing and if you see this I don't know in one week or even in one week then obviously stuff will be different so keep that in mind so let's start with catalyst catalyst is our, our main profit source and what you can do with this is you can vendor imbued and abrasive catalyst because usually they are very very cheap to the point it's not really worth selling them the tracer catalysts are the most common ones and so my general rule is if they are about three times as cheap as Intrinsic Catalyst, then it is very likely for you to simply get more currency out of it. Also, if you get one Prismatic Catalyst out of 30 vendors Catalyst, then you're already covering up the costs, at least at the moment of the recording. Now, as for organs, once again, they are mostly only sellable in sets, so you really want to balance them. At the time of the recording, they were selling for as low as 16 chaos per set and as high as 20 chaos. 
so quite a lot of currency from it. You also can keep in mind that this league there is a challenge where people have to run five sets in the chain lab, so this can be utilized to your advantage. As for essences, I usually upgrade everything to shriekings and sell them as shriekings. The reason I'm not going for deafenings is that usually deafening essences are worth two shrieking essences, and in order to upgrade it, you need to spend three shriekings. Obviously, this can be different depending on the essence you're looking at, so just manually price check it, and then you'll see whether or not it's better to upgrade them. And one another thing is that usually it's better to sell greeds at screamings, so not even upgrade them to shriekings. They sell well enough here in this case. As for the Vs, I just put them in my stash tab, I separate them. You can see in one tab I have a tab full of good red bees and then on the other one left over from trading a yellow bee symbol i had even more yellow bees in my bee series so that's something that's refillable one thing that we got this league is a very good quality of life edition in which we can release bad red bees previously you had to be in menagerie and waste your yellow bees just in order to open up more space as for what are good red bees, I usually just look up on TFT and see which bees are sellable and then based on this I'm collecting them. Obviously stuff like Cracky Chimeral, Venomal Plague Arachnid is always worth it, but when it comes to some niche stuff it can be different. And other than this there is still a lot of good rewards, you get a lot of general rewards from Metamorph, you get a lot of good currency from Alter Rewards average currency and invitations so that's the general profit for the strat now with the main stuff done i'd like to talk about some weird less known or just interesting stuff that i found out when i was running this strat this is one of the reasons i wanted to make this video in the first place there is some interesting synergy going on between bees essences and metamorphs so let's start simple with what is the bees capacity when i was looking at it in the internet the usual answer was 1000, but when I was at full beast capacity and I was manually calculating bees, the actual number for me was 1100. I don't know what's going with this, but there is something going on about it. Another thing is Shrieking Essence Bees. Now, when you try to kill them, you get two beast icons, one from the original bees and then another one from Duplicated, which might make you think that you're getting two bees in your menagerie, but in fact you're only getting the original one. You're still getting double the essences though, but the double icon itself might be a bit deceiving. The next thing is Essence Metamorph Minions. As you know, essences enhance the minions and making them a lot more difficult, but the essences are not stored in the itemized samples themselves. If you try to use the minion from the essence, it will have its own basic modifiers, which sounds quite fair and intended, until you try to fight Essence Metamorph Bees. Now these are very rare and very hard to notice, primarily because you don't see the metamorph icon on top of essence bees. You'll notice this only when you'll kill the bees and it will say monsters lung, monsters liver or whatever, and then you can use it in your metamorph file. What is happening here is that this beast is actually soaring the essences it had, which is very weird. But what's more weird is that when you summon the metamorph with this organ, it will not have all essences, it will have some of them. For me it's usually in the range of 1 to 3. And the problem of this is that it's making the encounter a lot more difficult and the metamorphs themselves are a lot more tanky. The only bonus to this though is that you are getting the essences, but I don't find it good enough because it is just that more difficult. And lastly, there are some very cooked metamorph modifiers. Now, I've been running a few hundred maps and I managed to break only one, and fortunately, I managed to record it. I never read the metamorph modifiers because it will take too much time to run maps in that case. But this time, I managed to get something crazy. And what happened is I was on Toxic Rain, and I got the metamorph with life regen, cycling, damage reduction, chaos, and with a resistance and then fast energy recharge shield. To top that, it had this mana drain aura around him, so I can't be in the mid distance from him. I have to be either very far or in front of him. And what basically happened, I had no damage uptime and it was basically immoral. And then it transformed me into some bleed monster, Frog Giga bleed at me, and I died in one second. So yeah, if something similar happens to you, just portal out and run in your map. <laughs> it's not worth it. Trust me. And on this note, that's all for this video. I hope you found this video entertaining, 
educational or maybe even both. Even though there was no plans of me explaining the basics, the video is still insanely big. So if you like this one, let me know. If you have some additional ideas to this thread, write it down in the comments. And with all that said, have a good one.